Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. As I'm sure you're aware, security is a very important topic when it comes to being a Linux sysadmin. We need to make sure that the servers that we maintain are as hardened as we can possibly get them. So any tool or utility that we can get our hands on that'll help us identify things that are in memory that are of special concern, maybe things that are on patch that could potentially allow an outside threat actor access to our server, those are things that we need to pay special attention to, and utilities or tools that help us identify those things are of special use. Now, what we're going to look at today is a tool called uChecker that'll help us identify things in memory that we might want to take a special look at, things that could be out of date, linked libraries, things like that, that could be of special concern for our security hygiene. So this script is not going to be an end-all, be-all when it comes to securing our servers. But again, any tool or utility that we can get our hands on that'll help us identify things of concern on our server is definitely something great to have at our disposal. So let's go ahead and take a look at uChecker from the makers of Kernel Care that will allow us to do exactly that. All right, so here we are on my laptop, and I've gone ahead and pulled up the GitHub page for uChecker, and here it is. And inside this repository, we have a handful of files right here, and the star of the show is this one, uChecker.py. It's a Python script, as the extension would lead you to believe. And this is the actual script that we will be running. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we get some instructions for how to actually run it. And as you can see right here, it's just simply a matter of running a curl command to download the script and then piping it to sudo python. And just below this line right here, we get some example output right here that might mirror something that we may see when we run the script. And again, the whole point of this script is to let you know if you have outdated shared libraries in memory, that's what it's going to let you know. And right here we see some example of such a library that is currently in memory. And in this example output, we have a shared library that is tied to the HTTPD process, you know, basically Apache. We get a process ID for that, and then it tells us what the shared library is that it's linked to that is out of date. Now, what I'm going to do is actually show a run of this script. But before I do that, there's something important that we should do first. Now, over in this tab, I have pulled up the actual raw version of the uchecker.py script so we could get a good look at the script without all of the buttons and things you normally find on a website. And I really like the fact that GitHub allows you to view the raw version of files. So that way you can get rid of all the images and things all over the page and just focus on the code. And the reason why I've pulled this up is because it's a really good habit to get into to check a script first before you run it on your server. Now this is a trusted repository, so I don't have any reason to believe that there's anything in here of concern, but it's just a great habit to be in to always check a script before you run it on your server, especially if your server is a production server. So I'm not going to go over the entire script. As you can see, there's quite a few lines of code right here, and I do think that it's very well written. I'm a big fan of Python. I even have a Python series on my channel. If you haven't already seen it, definitely check it out. But anyway, after you've gone through this script and nothing stands out as a concern, then we can go ahead and run it. Now back here on the GitHub page, again, we have the command right here to go ahead and run this script. And for that, what I've done is I've actually created a Linode for this purpose. Now, it doesn't really matter where your server is, if it's on Linode, DigitalOcean, or a physical server for that matter. All that matters is that the server actually has an internet connection and has access to the Python interpreter. Now, in my case, I set up this server with CentOS 7, which is not the most recent version of CentOS. And the reason why I decided to go with CentOS 7 rather than the latest and greatest is because I figured with an older version of the distribution, there might be a higher likelihood that there's going to be older packages that aren't patched That'll mean basically uChecker will have more things to find. But you don't actually need to be on an older version. You should be able to run this script on whatever your distribution of choice is. 
So anyway, I will copy the IP address and let's go ahead and get connected. All right, so I have connected to the Linode and now what I can do is, well, try to run the script and see what it's able to find. Now again, you first need to make sure that you have Python because, well, it's a Python script. So what you could do is just type which and then Python to make sure that you do have it. And I do. And if you don't, then just use whatever your package manager is for your distribution to get that installed. And then once you have it installed, we could paste in the command right here to go ahead and run it. And well, there it is. Again, we are using curl and we are pulling down the URL kernelcare.com slash uchecker. And then we're piping that into sudo Python. I'm sure at this point you've already checked the script and everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and run it. So let's take a look at the output here because it found quite a few things of concern here most of which are due to an older version of libc, as we can see here, is telling us that it's, well, not up to date. And sudo is on the list, which is a big concern to me because, as I'm sure you're probably already aware, sudo is what we often use to run commands as other users. And running commands as other users is exactly what outside actors want to do if they break into our server. Also on patch is firewall D, SSH, which is also a huge target for outside actors to use to try to break into the server. And also systemd, and that is PID1, so that's extremely important to make sure that we have that patched, and as you can see here, it's not. Now all of these are linked to a single library, libc2.17.so, and it looks like each of these binaries are all linked to that shared library. So what I'm going to do is update the server. So for that, I will just run yum update. So as you can see here, we have 33 packages that will be upgraded and one that will be newly installed. So what I'm going to do is install these updates. Let's see what happens. So now we can see that the process of updating the packages is complete. Now, I'm a big fan of aliases because it just allows me to simplify longer commands. And what I'm going to do right now is actually create an alias to uchecker to make it that much more easier to run. So what I'll do is just type alias, I'll call it uchecker, and then I'll set it equal to, well, the command that we've already run, and I'll press enter. And to be on the safe side, what I'm also going to do is add this to my bash RC to make sure that I don't lose this when my session closes. So I will edit my bash rc, and then here I will create the same alias. So that way when I log out and log in, I will still have that. So now we could run it by simply typing uchecker. Now to be fair, I did just run updates. So we have a mismatch here because the versions of the packages that are on the disk are not the same as what's in memory. And what I'm going to do now is reboot the server, which is, you know, typically recommended when you have very important updates that you've installed. But as it shows at the bottom, Kernel Care Plus is a service that Kernel Care, you know, the ones who made this script, have made available to allow you the option to actually patch the shared libraries that are in memory, so that way you don't actually have to reboot. And that's very similar to Kernel Live Patching, which is a service that they also offer. Now, if you want to check that out, you could check out the link that is on the screen, or you could check out the link in the description below. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and reboot the server, and then I will run the script again. So back here on my web browser, I'm just going to go to the Linode dashboard. I could probably just type reboot on the command line, and that would work just fine. But with Linode, I find that the process of rebooting is much quicker if I do it through the dashboard. So let's go ahead and reboot. And now I'll just go ahead and give this a moment to reboot. And once it's done, I'll be right back. All right, so we're ready to go. All 
All right, so now I am logged in to the server and we can go ahead and give the script another run. And I've actually just noticed that there have been 46 failed login attempts to get into the server. The reason for that is probably because password authentication for SSH is enabled, which you should never do. But this is just a test server, so if it did get taken over, I would just go ahead and delete it. But that actually highlights one of the reasons why we need a script like this. So I should probably shut down password authentication offline to make sure that this doesn't get taken over. But anyway, let's go ahead and give it another run. So with the alias that I've created earlier, I should be able to just run uChecker just like that. Let's see what happens. And now here at the bottom, it's telling us that everything is okay. So, you know, I've installed all of the updates, I've rebooted the server, but now we can see that we are in reasonably good shape. Now again, uChecker is just one of many security utilities out there, but it's definitely a great one to have at your disposal. So anyway, back here on my web browser, if you scroll down, we actually get some troubleshooting information as well. If you have found a problem or you're having an issue trying to run the script, then this command right here is something that you might want to try running that may help you troubleshoot the issue. And if nothing else, you could use the more verbose output that you'll get from running this version of the command to input into a bug report if you want to make the developers aware of any problems that you encounter. But what I'll do is just run it and see what happens. So I'll paste it in right here, and let's see how the output differs. And just like before, it's telling us that everything is okay, but we get a heck of a lot more output if we scroll through right here. So as you can see, if you're trying to troubleshoot or diagnose a problem with the script, this is a good way to get some more information, but I'm not actually having a problem with the script. So there's nothing here that's relevant in my use case, but it's just good to know that you can run the debug version if you need to do that. And since the code is right here out in the open, I highly recommend that you take advantage of that. You can submit a feature request if you want to make a suggestion on something that they could add to the script. If you run into any problems, then definitely submit an issue here to let them know about it. I like the fact that this is an open source tool because not only can we audit the code, and we know that it's safe to run, but we're also able to go in and recommend changes, improvements, and things like that, which is awesome. UChecker is a pretty cool script. It's able to show you some of the linked libraries that might be running in memory that could be of special concern. And best of all, it's open source, so you can see the code, you can contribute to it, report issues, submit wish list items, things like that. It's definitely an awesome script. Now to be fair, no one script is going to give you 100% security hygiene, but the more tools you have at your disposal, the better, and it's definitely a great tool to have. So what are your thoughts and opinions? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you haven't already done so, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.